We've got the refreshed Hyundai Sonata. This one needed it. <laughs> Here we go in sport mode. Sonata. That's got some good power. Not bad. Yeah, that's uh, got some good power. All right, so we're going to get into why I think this needed an update in a second. Okay, it's the looks. Yeah. Uh, right now, what's under the hood of this thing, Andrea? A 2.5 liter four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 191 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. Front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available. All wheel drive is a first for Sonata. There is a more powerful engine in the end line. It's also a 2.5 liter, but turbocharged with an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission, 290 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. This front wheel drive only. In Canada, Hyundai will not be producing a Sonata hybrid for 2024. In the US, the hybrid is available. It has a two liter four cylinder hybrid engine with a combined 192 horsepower. You can use regular fuel in the Sonata. Updated Sonata, what do you get with it? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 4.2 inch driver display, a 12.3 inch touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, six speaker audio system, heated and ventilated front seats, power front seats, driver seat memory, leather seating surfaces, a heated steering wheel, and a panoramic sunroof. In the US, the base model doesn't come with all these features, but higher trims do offer a power passenger seat, ventilated front seats, driver seat memory, and a panoramic sunroof. Well, Andrew has already put it in sport. What else can we put it in? Got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes and to get a question in. More on that halfway through the video. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. Well, usually we talk about the looks a little bit later, but I mentioned it off the beginning. It needed an update. Yeah. I thought the previous version of Sonata was an odd looking fish. It looked like a fish. It looked like a carp with a big open mouth. Yeah. And it also looks sad. It's sad headlamps. It did look sad. It did look sad. This is much brighter and fresher and newer and more modern. Wow, the feedback from Instagram is they're seeing a lucid air vibe with yeah. the uh, daytime running light strip. Mm -hmm. I can see that. What an improvement Hyundai has made. I was so happy to see this. You've got a new front grill, uh, front and rear bumpers, new tail lights new headlights. It just looks so much better than the outgoing model, in my opinion. For those who have the current Sonata, I'm sorry, but looks are subjective, right? Yeah, it looks like a fish. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you caught that at the very beginning when we went through all of the engine choices. All-wheel drive is now available on Sonata. That's the one we have. This yeah. is the base model, actually. How are you enjoying it? I really like it. I mean, I always liked the way Sonata handled anyway, but some are saying, oh, I really miss that 1.6 liter turbo engine. I actually think that this has sufficient power, especially as a runaround in the city. Yes, when you get it on the highway and you want to pass, it is going to work a little bit harder, but I think overall it's well done. This has got a multi-link rear suspension. The N-Line model has got a sport tuned suspension and the all wheel drive system is front wheel drive based. Just having a bigger sedan versus say the Elantra is going to give you uh, more road presence, it's going to feel more polished, more upscale, uh, more premium just because it's got a longer wheelbase. But that Elantra is definitely a vehicle that competes with this and for some people, and we're going to get to it in our hot topic, would you buy the top model of that or yeah. the base model of this? Let's stick around for that. And that's really the question because the Elantra offers a lot of value as well. I think the steering on this model feels really good. It's a little bit heavier. We do have it in sport mode. Now Hyundai really worked on noise vibration and harshness of this refresh sonata i definitely find it a little bit quieter but when you're on the highway the Kick noise it. level Kick definitely it. creeps in but you do yeah. that in any you any know, vehicle any you're vehicle. gonna get it yeah, you're gonna get yeah. more sound coming the in way it is. i'm not loving the transmission andrea mm -hmm. i think uh, especially when the car is cold yeah it, it's kind of hunting for gears and a little bit herky-jerky um you know we've driven the wet dual clutch they have in the end line so 
that's the one for me weak point of this is I find the transmission when cold isn't as smooth as I would like. It didn't bother me as much as it bothered Zach, but I do feel when you kick it, there is a slight delay to get going in this Sonata. So we talked about how this is an improvement over the last model in terms of looks. What do you get for features on the outside? Well, this gets 5.3 inches of ground clearance, and we already talked about that it gets a new grill and it's got larger air intakes. The base trim comes standard with LED headlights and LED tail lights, body color door handles and mirror caps, chrome trim and 18 inch wheels. Now you get a tire repair kit in Canada, in the US a temporary spare tire, but the hybrids in the US get a tire repair kit. If you get the end line, of course, it's sportier with gloss black exterior accents, an end line grill and rear bumper, end line badging, rear lip spoiler, dual exhaust tips, and 19 inch wheels. So, a tire repair kit available, regular spare tire in the US, you know what I'd go to the mm -hmm. dealer and I'd order that spare tire. Sure. I don't know why. Why? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. All right, the inside of this thing has what we're starting to see across the Hyundai Group family, which is the one big screen with two uh, centers in it. You've got your instrument cluster and your main screen there. This is kind of what we're seeing from Hyundai Group over the whole lines. Now, Hyundai is calling this center console a bit of a floating design, which I get. Of course, there's no storage underneath. There's a little tiny storage pocket on the passenger side. Maybe you could put your phone in there. Um, they have changed things up in here. It's a 12.3 inch touchscreen, which is standard, a 4.2 inch digital driver display. But they fake it. They make it look like a 12.3 inch screen. So the, the center of the instrument cluster is the four inch, but then they put the, you know, the RPM and the speedo on either side to yeah. make it look like it's a full dig digital cluster. So it's clever the way they've done that. Yeah, you don't feel like you're missing out on having that larger digital driver display. Here's some good news. The touch screen has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, whether you get navigation or not. Such a great addition. I paired my phone like that, yeah. like lightning speed. How many years did that take, Andrea? Took a lot a while, of years. But it's here. It's here. So we're seeing this also from Hyundai is the shifter is now the digital shifter behind the steering wheel. It first arrived in the electrified cars. It's now in this mainline car. Uh, not our favorite. I will say after a couple of days, you do get used to it. It does clean up space, but there you go. I'm not sure, do I prefer the button shifter that the Sonata used to have or this? Mm. Still trying to decide between you tell the us. two. Yeah. You tell us, well, do you like the button shifter or this thing? Now the steering wheel has new materials and you've got the four dots here, which is H for Morse code. <laughs> uh, we're seeing that more and more in Hyundai models. You've got a panoramic sunroof here with a shade. Um, it's got some nice features in here considering it is the base model in Canada. Yeah, but it's a base model for a price. You can have yeah. you can yeah. have it fully loaded and call it the base model. Mm -hmm. it depends on how much you want to well, spend. Well, that's kind of what Hyundai has done. They've yeah, exactly. loaded this up with features in Canada. I guarantee you that people who bought the old Sonata, they bought it with everything in it. So they're just doing that. Yeah, that's for sure. That's basically what they're doing. And I like a lot of the different trim pieces and the materials that Hyundai has used in here. The center console offers some pretty good storage. Now the base model doesn't have a wireless charger, but you've got a nice storage area in place of it. Available features include the full 12.3 inch digital driver display, navigation, a Bose sound system, a rear view monitor, head up display, Nappa leather and faux suede upholstery with red stitching for the end line, and 64 color ambient lighting. The Sonata does not have heated rear seats. Speaking of rear seats, here's me getting in, and one of the reasons why you might want a sedan over a compact utility is it's very comfortable. You get good leg room, good headroom, a much more comfortable place than many SUVs. Comparing the Sonata to the Honda Accord, the Sonata offers 46.1 inches of front row leg room, which is big. It's 3.8 inches more than the Accord. Rear seat leg room at 34.8 inches is small. Compared to the Accord, the Honda gets an extra six inches of space. Trunk space for the Sonata at 15.6 cubic feet falls a little short to the Accord. So what's the deal with no hybrid for Canada? Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. 
your questions from Instagram. Props to Hyundai to create such an appealing car. This is my favorite in the class and struggling to find faults with it. Do you think there will ever be a Sonata N? We've got the N line, mm. but he's talking N. I just don't think there's a big enough market for that. Um, even the Elantra N, I don't see any on the road. It's no. just not what people are looking for. And if you're going to, you're going to have to charge more. And then you could, there, there's so many more options. Yeah, I just don't think that the sales are strong enough for Sonata, especially in Canada. You already see Hyundai, especially in Canada, really cleaning up their trims on this model, which leads me to believe that it's not a bestseller and they're focusing on the trims that sell. No, what they're focusing on are the SUVs because once you get this and then you equip it with all-wheel drive, then you equip it with an N, yeah. someone's just going to say, well, I can just go buy me a nice SUV, which is what people want. Do you know how Hyundai justifies cutting the hybrid in Canada? This does not make any sense to me, especially since they are building one for the U.S. market. It doesn't make sense to me either, especially when you've got uh, Camry coming with a with with hybrid only. Mm -hmm. Like the thing is, in the midsize space, especially in the Canadian market, there's Camry Accord and everybody else. Yeah. Now it's going to be Camry Accord and a big drop to this. Not having a hybrid is a big mistake. Um, I was surprised by that too. We reached out to the PR team from Hyundai Canada and the sales are just not there. But they did say, look, if there are a lot of requests from consumers and the media is talking about this, it's not a dead deal for the uh, hybrid for Sonata. But at this time, they are not going with it. And here's the thing. I pulled some numbers from good car, bad car. It doesn't and, sell. This thing doesn't sell, right? And in Canada, I only have 2022 numbers on that site. They don't have 2023 yet for Canada. But under 1,500 Sonatas yeah. were sold. They didn't break down hybrid and gas models, but there's your answer. You look at the Elantra from Good Car, Bad Car, and for 2022, over 11,000 were sold. It has a hybrid. If you want a hybrid, that's a big compact sedan. I've read that Hyundai is planning to discontinue the Sonata. Is this still speculation at this point? For sure speculation. Lots of rumors going around. We even saw that with the Genesis G70. We reached out to Genesis. They said, no, it's around for sure until 2025. Um, what? what happens after that? Who knows? Well, you see uh, Mazda got rid of the Mazda 6 or the Mazda 6. I'm surprised Legacy from Subaru still being made. Me too. Because they can't give those things away. Yeah. So if you see Legacy get dropped by Subaru, then this one might be on the chopping block. I did um, read an article and there was a quote from the president and COO of Hyundai Global. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that, no, what you know, we're really focused on sedans and keeping that in their portfolio, whereas a lot of manufacturers have started to eliminate sedans. So it sounds like they're focused on it. I mean, Hyundai has a pretty great portfolio, you know, from SUVs to compact, even, you even know, mid-sized sedans and performance. Yeah, even hot hatches, mm -hmm. right? And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Hard to justify a top trim compact sedan over this one within the same price tag. So I think it's different north and south of the border. Americans typically buy larger vehicles in Canada, so the midsize probably will be more popular than the Elantra. But in Canada, it's a different story. Compact cars rule. And then the other thing is you can get the hybrid in the Elantra. You can also, with that car, it comes with independent rear suspension, which is going to match up nicely against this. It's already big. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be the main competitor for this car is the smaller car. Yeah, and I think it's a really good question. You know, do you go for for the Elantra top trim? Do you go for the hybrid or do you get this? I think the appeal of the Sonata now is that there's an all wheel drive option. I think that this may be a better seller now for Sonata, for you, Hyundai. But I don't know, Andrea, Nissan brought out Altima, standard all wheel drive in Canada. Yeah. Couldn't give them away. Uh, we, I talked about the Subaru Legacy a moment ago, standard all wheel drive, can't give those away. I think so we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. One of the benefits of this for those who don't like a CVT, which Ultima has, for example, mm -hmm. this has got, you know, the eight speed That's automatic transmission. Yep. That might be something there uh, for people. So, yeah, we wait and see. Mid size 
sedans are not as popular these days anymore. All you right. want a Hyundai Tucson? Good luck at one. All I'll right, let's get into uh, what are all the vital stats for this latest Sonata. Let's start with pricing. In Canada, the preferred base model starts at just over $35,000. If you want all-wheel drive, add 2000 Canadian. In the U.S., the base model starts at $27,500. Add all-wheel drive for $1,500 U.S. Here's the fuel economy for the base engine front-wheel drive model. 9.6 liters per 100 kilometer city, 6.5 on the highway. That's 25 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway. Same engine but all-wheel drive, the fuel economy is 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7 on the highway. That's 24 miles per gallon city, 34 miles per gallon highway. The warranty is 5 years, 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. In the United States, 3 years complimentary maintenance is included. All right, let's get into the two top sellers and others that you might want to choose in comparison to this. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Uh, first is the new Toyota Camry with a 2.5 liter four cylinder and Toyota's fifth generation hybrid system. It has a combined 225 horsepower for front wheel drive and 232 horsepower for all wheel drive. Pricing has not been announced yet. The Honda Accord with a 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder, 192 horsepower, and a starting price of almost $39,500. The Nissan Altima with a 2.5 liter four cylinder, 182 horsepower, and a starting price of over $31,500. The Chevy Malibu with a 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder, 163 horsepower, and a starting price also $31,500. So there are four midsize sedans for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we'd like to see improved. Oh, there's so many things I'd like to say I like, but I'm just gonna stick with the exterior styling. What an improvement. Yeah, all wheel drive is a nice thing to have. You know what I'd like to see in this because the competitors have it? How about some air vents in the back seat? They're under the seat, but it would be nice to have some for the passengers. And hybrid for Canada. Why can we not get what they have south of the border? Because it doesn't sell. Camry's going only hybrid. Mm -hmm, so figure is. that, riddle me that. Yeah. All right, so that's the Sonata review. What do you think of that? Thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, subscribe. We'll see you next time.